known as $2 Tuesdays at wagertalk.com and sportsmemo.com, where you can get the hottest handicappers, best bet, or daily package for only $2. Hey guys, welcome in. Uh, very uh, happy Tuesday to you now, 27th of December. It is bowl season and we've got, well, we got four that we're going to break down for you here coming up over the next uh, week or so. We'll do it with three of the finest over at wagertalk.com as we welcome back in Adam Trigger in the house, Mr. Tony Finn, as well as Dave Koken, uh ready to go here for bowl season, guys. And there's uh, plenty going on uh, today. In fact, one game underway, a couple of more still to come. And uh, we'll take a look and see if we can find some of these uh, these upcoming ones, uh, any sort of angles for us to latch on to. As uh, we welcome in Adam Trigger, who I understand getting ready to attend a ball game here coming up in the near future, Trigg. So I see you're wearing the Q's jersey. Something tells me that might be a hint, my man. What's happening? Uh, that's correct, Joe. I'll be at the game on Thursday, 2 p.m., Yankee Stadium, Pinstripe Bowl against Minnesota. Uh, I will have something on that game, which I'll talk about at the end of the show. Um, overall, football's been great. Um, split my five percenters this weekend, hit with the Panthers. I ended up adding one with the Colts that didn't go well last night. Uh, but for the most part, can't complain on football, and I have back-to-back -back winners in college basketball. Hopefully, that's finally getting going. I have a 4% college basketball play tonight, my only play for Tuesday, and I'm going to give out a best bet that is also a 4% play at the end of the show. All right, good stuff there. Tony Finn, uh, what's going on, man? A uh, little bit of everything here today, a little spattering of uh, stuff. What are you looking at uh, over at wagertalk.com? NBA, any bowl games? What's going on? A spattering of a lot of stuff over at wagertalk.com. <laughs> Uh, yeah, oh, I have a, a, my NBA package mm -hmm. up, ready to rock for the night. Uh, coming off a 5% winner uh, last night. Actually, a two, that's 2 no day yesterday. Uh, Monday night, or the uh, Monday night football gig was a winner for me, as was the, was the uh, late NBA action in Portland. So, uh, I have 10 bowl games uh, that I really like. I haven't loaded them all yet, but, uh, but most of them are loaded. You can get that package, as well as the NFL for this weekend. Uh, I... I don't see any issues with uh, uh, put them up early. I don't see any issues with some injuries. Nothing been reported. Um, something can have obviously turn up, but uh, I like what I see. Everything only at Wager Talk. This is my homepage. All right, that's the way to go here, guys. Dave Koken in number one uh, all time here at Wager Talk in net profits. Uh, Dave, any uh, any bowl action on your card yet, or uh, anything else for that matter on this uh, Tuesday? Yeah, just grinding along at everything. Uh, just shy of 100 net units this year. Number one all time. Uh, for those not, if you're looking for big plays, I'm not your guy. If you're looking for a lot of volume, I'm not your guy. Just grind it out. Yesterday I had a 2% play on New Mexico. Cash that. I've got a 2% and a 3% play today. So uh, nothing's going to change for me. I'm going to be low risk. Low volume, grind it out, and when the dust settles, you'll be in good shape as a rule. So that's about it. Yeah, no, that's it. Uh, congrats to Jerry Kill and company there yesterday. Nice win. Nice win, Dave. And we got a few that we're going to break down here now. Let's dive into the Arizona Bowl, if we can, guys. Taking a look here at uh, Wyoming and uh, the Bobcats of Ohio. Oh, One and a half, it looks like, Ohio. 42 and a half as a total. This is coming up here in, uh, at, towards the end of the week, guys. 4.30 Eastern time uh, tip. Um, great season in the MAC for Ohio. But, Dave, as you have said many times here on the show, the MAC. Uh, okay, congratulations. You were the best the MAC had to offer. What do you think of this matchup here against Wyoming? Well, and they're not they're not the same team they were in the regular season because Rourke isn't there. Right. And we've seen, look, the backup, he's a nice run pass option, but he can't throw. Uh, I mean, he's just not very accurate. Wyoming is missing a lot of guys. A lot of guys. And they're mostly on offense. Um, 
I'm going to make this quick because I really don't have much of the game. I would the what makes the most sense in this game is the under mm. because of the absence of the Wyoming side and the fact that Ohio, I think, might be one dimensional. Um, but bear in mind, I haven't given out a total all year. I don't remember the last time I gave out a college football <laughs> total. I'm not very good at them, which is what, you know, you want to win at this stuff long term. Stay away from the stuff you suck at. Uh, that's why I got rid of the NBA a few years ago. I couldn't beat the league anyway. And that's why I don't do totals in football. So I like the under in this game, which probably means you ought to bet the over. <laughs> All right. Well, it's uh, it's uh, it's funny. I was just signing. I don't remember the last time you you threw out a total here. Never. Uh, yeah. Well, I know. I mean... I'll, I'll do it. I'll do it here on the show because they're just opinions. Right. But this is absolutely not a play for me. No. No. It's uh, a guess at best here. A lot of uh, talent. Uh, you know, voided on both sides here. Uh, Trig. I, I know the Wyoming coach there, Ball. He's been actually money in bowl games in the past, but. Uh, I don't know. How are you approaching this matchup here, uh, Trig? Yeah, well, he's he's perfect in bowl games against the spread 4-0. and um, Coming into this, what will be his fifth bowl game um, in his tenure in Laramie. And so they've touched on Wyoming's missing a bunch of players. And I think the – but I think I can still make a case for Wyoming because I, I think they're, they – in this matchup with some time to prepare – I think they might be able to overcome their absences. So, as Dave mentioned, they're mostly on the offensive side of the ball. Wyoming's going to win games via their defense. Uh, and, and it's really going to come down to Wyoming's ability to move the ball. Uh, they're going to want to run. Now, my concern there is Ohio's pass defense is atrocious. That's been arguably what – I mean, that's not arguably. It's been what they've been worst at all season. So – that's a little bit of a concern. You know, can Wyoming take advantage of that weakness for Ohio? This is a tough one. I haven't bet anything in this game yet. I lean toward the absences on Wyoming not being as big of a deal as Rourke not being there for mm -hmm. Ohio. And for that reason, I think I lean toward Wyoming at the current number. Uh, but it's not something I bet yet. And I think, to be honest, uh, I'll be interested to see what Tony says because I think one could make a decent case for both teams. I guess I just prefer Wyoming here. I think they have the better defense and ultimately get it done. Their top four running backs and their number one uh, receiver for the Cowboys uh, won't be here, Tony Finn, which leaves you with not a whole hell of a lot left. So what do you think uh, we're going to get here, Finn? Well, you started with Ohio started soft. Two and three, um, they failed to keep Rourke upright. He, they lost him late in the year. And all things equal, you want to compare uh, Mac or even uh, to uh, to the Wyoming's and the and the Mountain West, et cetera, et cetera. Their defense was uh, I, I hate these were inept, but they weren't very good. Um, Albin though, Coach Albin somehow created and choreographed a seven game winning streak to get to the damn Mac championship, which he lost to Toledo. Um, but for the most part, I agree with everything that what Dave said and what Trigg said. That is, listen, Wyoming's not bringing anything back. They're not bringing back. The inmates that split and carried the rocks in season, gone. No top receiver and Joshua Cobbs, gone. Um, however, this is a team, their style of play is – is to just basically three yards in a cloud of dust, three yards in a cloud of dust, play mm -hmm. defense, keep the score low. And in bowl games like this, when you've lost a lot of talent, uh, your top producers throughout the year uh, against a team like Ohio, I absolutely, if I'm in this room, guys, I'm absolutely agreeing with this. I am on and in and all over Wyoming uh, because they, listen, they exceeded expectations. I expect them to do the same in this bowl game simply because of the system that they run. Okay, there you go. Arizona Bowl here. Guys, we'll move on to uh, the Orange Bowl. He has uh, Clemson looking on, taking on uh, Tennessee now. I'm seeing five here, 63 and a half for the total. This two coming up, end of the week, 8 o'clock Eastern time. No Hendon Hooker, no Jalen Hyatt. Uh, we've got uh, a bit of a quarterback uh, change there for Clemson. Dave, when you put it all together... Who do you give the edge to? 
Well, look, I, I, the quarterback controversy at Clemson is finally done because DJ <laughs> can't play a lele, uh, has moved, he's gone. So the guy who probably start, should have been starting all year is finally starting. And so this is the first, to me, this is the first game of 2023 for Clemson. Tennessee, is Tennessee excited about being here for this game? I mean, they had hopes of being in the playoffs after they beat Alabama. That didn't work out. They lose Hooker, which is huge. The backup can play, but he's, he's turnover prone. Um, I think Tennessee still might be despite the fact that the underdog, they might still be the, the better team here. Uh, but I'm not sure of that. So it's going to be a lean for me on the volunteers. I'm not going to be – let me I, – I, I, I'm not going to bet this game, okay, because mm -hmm. to me there's too many unknowns. What I would do if you're going to bet it, uh, either lay it with Clemson or take Tennessee on the money line because I think if it's close, Tennessee's going to find a way to win the game. That'll mean they're into it. In which case, their overall talent, I think, is better than Clemson's, and I think they'll find a way to win the game. So that would be my strategy. If you like Clemson, go ahead and lay it. If you like Tennessee, take a shot of the money line. If I'm playing with your money, I'm going to go Tennessee money line and see if I can get lucky. But it's not. this is not going to be a game I bet. So we, we've seen Trig the Money uh, come towards Tennessee. This was sevens, uh, you know, uh, a couple of weeks ago. Now it's uh, now we're seeing five and a halfs. Uh, Joe Milton is no, you know, he's no slouch. He's certainly not a uh, freshman that's never seen the field before. So he's got some experience for Tennessee. Do you trust Clemson's defense to uh, to slow down Josh Heupel and company here? Um, I still think Tennessee's offense will work here uh, I, I that's not going to be my angle as to why i go against tennessee but the only way i'm going to play this is clemson and i'm going to just kind of continue to watch and see if this number gets better uh because i i think clemson is in a far better position to win this game than tennessee is first of all joe i was at clemson syracuse down at death valley surrounded by very knowledgeable fan right like everyone down there knows their stuff um, and it was the game where DJ finally got benched and multiple people in my section just, it was like a collective, so, like, <laughs> finally, right? Like, he's finally not on the field. And what that tells me is, club, I, I actually think Klubnik's probably a, a, an upgrade at quarterback um, as, as Absolutely. you know, for mm -hmm. this game. And I think Dave and I sort of talked about this on video last week. And, and now to see this number even a little bit shorter, I mean, I, I'm real close to jumping in with Clemson based on, on that, the fact that I think they have a an upgrade at the quarterback position and the fact that they return a lot of, of players that are going to be like ultra talents for next year. So it was a really good way to put it. The first game of next year for Clemson, Dabo prepares extremely well for bowl games. His record in bowl games is excellent. And I do think, you know, Clemson sort of, I don't want to say they were out of it early, but it was like, th this isn't a year where Clemson got to the bitter end with a shot to go to the college football playoff, at least in my opinion. I know that they were like hanging around top five, but they would have needed a, a, a lot of help to have any sort of chance to do that. So I think Clemson might actually be up for this game because of of the of looking forward to next year and the the players that they're returning that will play big roles next year, Tennessee, undisciplined team, heavily penalized. I think Sweeney's going to out prepare his opponent here, and for that reason, I'd lay the five with Clemson. All right, vote for Clemson here. What are you thinking, uh, Tony Finn? Are you uh, are you in Dabo's corner here, or do you think uh, Tennessee still the better team no matter what here? This is what I think I know, and that is that um, I don't know, never been an oppressor with, with uh, Dabo, but I have this feeling that he's an uber, over-the-top competitive guy. Um, just seems that way. Anything I've ever listened to, uh, I mean, all coaches are, all football players to some degree. you got to have that ad. you got to have some kind of um, ridiculous competitive instinct to, to be able to play at this level that we're talking about tonight. That's Tennessee and, and Clemson, but in 
this is this is a club Nick breakout party. I think that there's that the Clemson does have a lot to play for, right? This Cade wants to perform well. He knows he's going to be the man going into next year unless something drastically changes. Um, and, and, and we all knew this. We knew at some point in time, Dave mentioned it, it's true, at the, at the peak this year, Tennessee was beats Alabama. They destroyed LSU. They, were, that was their, they peaked a little early. Uh, but we knew at some point in time this year that their secondary was going to be an issue. And, you know, you may have thought it was going to be Anthony Richardson. You may be Sten- uh, Stinson Bennett, et cetera, et cetera. But it was really – it was Spencer Rattler who absolutely destroyed them. 440, 438 yards, six touchdowns, uh, no picks from Spencer Rattler. And a 63 to – what was it, 63-38 win. Um, geez, they look good, right? <laughs> Here's the problem. you got to be able to run the fo- – in this, in this offense – um, in this offense, and, and I and listen, I'm a big fan of this offense. I'm a big fan of w- what uh, what the coach did in the first year um, with this Tennessee team, should I say. But no hooker. And they have to be able to run the ball, and I just don't think they do it against Clemson. Only a couple teams were successful running the football against Clemson, and, and they bring back – Clemson brings back a ton of NFL talent on this defense, if, these in the front. And – if you can't run the ball for more than 150 yards, and Clemson only gave that up twice, I think, this year, Florida State and Notre Dame, um, you, you, you're not going to win. Give me Clemson. All right. Clemson, it is. Uh, there you go, guys. That's going to be the Orange Bowl. We're going to move on to the Music City Bowl, a game in which, if you love scoring, don't watch. Iowa minus two taking on Kentucky, and this will be without a doubt. Probably the lowest, I believe they said, the lowest uh, total for a bowl game since 2000. We, we've we talked a lot about uh, Iowa's inability to be able to score here, Dave. Minus 231, 31 and a half is a total. I don't know, first score win. How do you approach this matchup? Take a deck. Uh, <laughs> perfect game to sleep, sleep through. Iowa's got the better defense. <laughs> So uh, and I think that'll so get them true. a win. That's all I've got to say in the game. Uh, yeah. uh, I think the better defense does does go to the Cyclones, uh, the, not the Cyclones, the Hawkeyes, and uh, Iowa, 13-10 Iowa. Not only better defense, better special teams. Um, you know, yeah. th- that would absolutely be enough uh, to win them this game here. Uh, Trig is uh, Iowa versus Kentucky. You lean them one way or the other? Yeah, I actually lean toward Iowa for those reasons. I'll draw comparisons to a game that I was at a couple weeks ago, Army-Navy, similar total, extremely low 30s. And that's ultimately what made the difference in that game. Like, Army got the big punt block, um, and and they kind of made, you know, more plays in special teams and and defensively. Uh, They weren't necessarily the the quote-unquote better team, but their special teams were better, and they made the bigger Mm. play. And... And it ultimately, you know, I would uh, say that that won them the game. Uh, I was, in my uh, well, you opinion, know what, re- you know what really won them the game? Uh, yeah. the, na- the Navy coach, the Navy coach, oh. not going for two, and that's why they fired him. Yeah, he should have gone for two, and they would have <laughs> won the game. Yep. Gutless, yeah, gutless I, I, and I would have, I would have been fine with that. I had Army plus three, plus three, I believe, in oh, that yeah, game. You, uh, you went first, anyway. yep. yep. First of all, I, I wouldn't want to lay like. I really wouldn't want to be sitting there with minus two uh, mm. in a game like this because points are at such a premium. But I do I do prefer the Iowa side here for those reasons. I think they have the ability to make a play. Uh, defensively, they've been one of the best in, in sort of turning defense into offense. Uh, their special teams rate out much higher than Kentucky's. Uh, we know Levis is out. We know Rodriguez is out. And they're going to have a, a an offensive coordinator, I believe. They, they fired their offensive coordinator. So that's mm-hmm. a situation there. I just think I was in a better position to, to play this football game. And because their defense is better, the special teams is better. I'm kind of with Dave where I don't know if I want much part of this, but if I had to take a side here, it'd be the Hawkeyes. 11 and one Kentucky was to the under there, uh, Tony Finn. If it ain't broke, don't fix it right against Iowa. Are you leaning one way or the other in this matchup? Uh, I'm actually with these guys here. I'm not. And I, I have to chuckle. Dave was spot on because when I saw this matchup, I said, my goodness gracious, if I need some rest uh, during the football season, this is the game to watch because um, there are certain shows on television that, you know, you 
everybody knows that puts you to sleep, right? Well, this would be, yeah, this would be, this is big 10 football, uh, you know, 25 years ago and it would put me to sleep. So uh, Kentucky's a little different than they were a couple of years ago, but I think both these coaches want to win. I think both these teams will try, um, mm-hmm. you know, last year, Kentucky beat Iowa 20 to 17. Um, but this isn't a game I'm on. Most this is most I can't be in this game in this room, guys, is because I don't trust Iowa. I know they're talented. I know they got NFL guys all scattered all over the field. I, I can't put my arms around them. I never could this year. Heck, I had problems last year. I'm not in this game, but it will be a nice nap, and it should be a low scoring game, just like these guys said. Yeah, no, no, no argument yeah. there. Well, no uh, one, Tony, no one's. No one's going to nap. They're just going to be watching Kansas State, Alabama. Well, that's what I was going to say. Yes. Yeah, so, you know, <laughs> let's just swing it right over there because a uh, very similar uh, day, you're going to be able to get to the Sugar Bowl and watch a team, uh, a couple of teams that will absolutely score more than anything you might see in Iowa, Kentucky. Alabama, six and a half. The total is 56. Noon Eastern time kick on New Year's Eve. Uh, the Sugar Bowl and... Uh, Dave, how about motivation for Bama in this one? Are you concerned with it at all, or you think Saban will have no. these guys ready? No, Saban's come right out and said that they're going to play. Uh, look, Al- the only problem here, I like Alabama, but I can't recommend them at six and a half because it was three. Um, it's like, I don't know what's happening right now in the Georgia Southern game, but I saw it. Guys on Twitter today posting Georgia Southern at minus six. And it's like, <laughs> you, had, you had weeks to bet the game. Literally weeks to bet the game. And you're laying six on game day when you could have laid three and a half. That's just stupid, okay? It, 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 what it means to me is you're just following other people. So here, the, the bet was Alabama at three and a half or three. I think Alabama is going to win by more than a touchdown. So, I mean, I'm not, I'm not suggesting that you take Kansas State for value. I don't think that value is enough to get you there. But, uh, and, and I'm going to give you Alabama's the best bet. But I wouldn't recommend betting it because the line is, you just, you just don't intentionally take three points the worst of it and expect to win long term. So I'll give you an opinion on Alabama. I'll use it as the best bet here in the show because I really don't like any of these games. Particularly, I do. I have some balls I like, but they're just not on the show we're doing today. Uh, so Alabama, but I, I don't recommend it at the price. Yeah, uh, the price has gotten a little crazy because it's Alabama trig. But you know, if we ever hear, oh, no, you got 15 players enter the transfer portal, you might be worried. Uh, but it's Bama, and the guys that are going to be right behind them are probably just as good. So Bryce, oh, no, Jones, let me uh, let me jump ahead. in. Go ahead. The guys that. Are- the guys that are transferring weren't starters anyway. Starters. <laughs> That's why they're, they're transferring. See they weren't gonna play. Yeah. They basically, what I've been told is they were basically told to transfer because they weren't going to be on the on the yep. roster next year. So, yep. So don't uh, don't uh, don't be <laughs> dissuaded from actually going that way. It's not a mass exodus, like Dave said. Yes, ain't one playing the field anyway. So uh, the big one is Bryce Young and Will Anderson. They continue to say we're going to go. What do you do with this here? You, uh, K-State, uh, you've backed them many times this year. Do they have enough left in the tank to get it done? So I'll, I'll offer up an opinion on the total, but I'll, I'll throw this out there as a way. So Dave said, you know what? I like Alabama. I can't do it at six and a half, but... Mm-hmm. The team total for Bama is 30, 30 and a half Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of places. And read an interesting stat. Alabama has scored 30 or more points in 46 of their past 53 games. 46 (laughs) of their past 53 games. They've eclipsed 30 points. And I actually think that this is going to be an entertaining game. From both sides, I think both sides are going to be up for this. Nick Saban came out and essentially called Kansas State a bad football team indirectly, but he still did. I'm sure that that's been plastered all over the locker room. And they, they you know, Alabama. I don't, I don't know that I buy into the fully buy into the narrative that um, just because like they're not going to care. I mean, it, it is notable that it's not a college football playoff game, and and Alabama sort of, you know, they measure success there by 
winning championships, not necessarily winning bowl games. Um, but it, the, I think the total overall is low. I, I actually think this is going to be an entertaining football game. And if you base that, if you if you take that number, 46 of the last 53, and think Alabama is going to come to play, and they might get over that, and as long as Kansas State doesn't embarrass themselves, it's it's going to get over that mid 50s total. So I'll I'll offer up a lean toward the over here. All right, like it towards the over. Finn, how about you? Uh, yeah. Is it uh, saving or pass for you, or you got uh, you're looking at the total? I don't. You know, how do you how do you win seven national titles? You know, six at Bama, one at uh, one down south in Cajun country at LSU, and get excited about this. You know, I but again, I just just said, hey, I think Clemson is a and Coach Dabo is uber competitive, and I think this will excite him. But mm. I. As Dave said, Saban came right out and he used he used starters and sugar bowl in the same sentence. Mm. So so I'm assuming that uh, unless he wants some grief for that after the game, that he's telling the truth. And and in that case, um, I think Kansas State's overmatched. But but Kansas State has been over. I've said Kansas State's been overmatched three or four times this year. And they proved me wrong every damn time. Mm. So. I thought they overachieved. I, you know, they, they, they're, that's Kansas State football. I mean, it's almost like Snyder never left, you know, mm. from what, we, what I watched this year from Kansas State. I, I'm not – I'll say this. I do have a game. Dave mentioned when a game moves like that, um, you know, you're not going to get the best number. You can, in the long run, it's probably going to, um, you know, put a couple um, bullet-sized holes in your butt, you know, and it probably will. Um, there's a time and a place that you can, you, can, you know – get late on a number because you just think it's right. You just think it's good. You just think it's going to win and you don't have to do it every time. I'm not in this game, not because of that reason, but it's a damn good reason, Dave. And I'm, I, I will say this, Alabama's the play. I'm just not in here. Not the play, but uh, yeah. it's, uh, it's going to be an entertaining game. I'm with you, Trey. <laughs> I think it's going to be one of the better, hell of a lot better than Kentucky, Iowa. Uh, all right. Dave already <laughs> told you his best bet. It's going to be Bama in this one, uh, guys. That's where he's leaning towards. Uh, and, uh, of course, don't forget, uh, wagertalk.com. You can visit uh, Dave's page now. You can go to Trigg's page. You can go to uh, Tony Finn's page. Guys, uh, best bets locked and loaded for these guys. Uh, those three-day, seven-day, and 30-day all-access packages, absolutely the way to go. You don't have to guess as to what they're playing. You don't have to worry about being late to the party. Head over there. Lock yourself in. Three-day, seven-day, and 30-day all-access passes. Every play uh, that they post, along with all the 5% best bets, yours right now. Just head over to wagertalk.com. All right, Dave, anything you want to add? Bam is the way you're leaning, right? Yeah, I got no, bet, no bets on these four games. I do have some plays in the remaining bowls. I got NHL, uh, college basketball is doing pretty well. And uh, see if we can... Finished off the year in style. It's been a good 2022. Absolutely. All right. Already a couple of wins in the bowl uh, season for Dave. Now, how about you, Trig? Is there a game you're leaning towards a little more than the rest? Yeah, I'll just, you know, it's been a great 2022 football season. Uh, two and one start for me for the bowl season. Uh, I'm pretty selective with these. I probably, I think I have four more locked in right now. I may add one or two more. I've got one. 5% bowl play that goes in a few days. That's up on my page now. And I'm going to give you one of the four percenters. Uh, little spoiler uh, for the clothing that I wore today. It is Syracuse plus 10. I will be in the building on two, on Thursday at Yankee Stadium for this game. Uh, but the reason I like Syracuse is I. the narrative here is all the opt-outs and the guys they won't have. But I really think that the biggest thing that Syracuse needed uh, after a brutal schedule and a bunch of injuries with some time off and mm. specifically they needed a healthy Garrett Schrader which they finally sort of got in the in the final game of the season against Boston College he was efficient he was able to move around and they finally got a win after starting the year you know six and oh uh, they finally got a win in their last game I you know I just don't think that the players there are down I think it's offset by having time to prepare for this game and j just the, the time off and the health is going to be so much you know higher than it was kind of going down the stretch of the season that I think 
it's it, the plus 10 is going to be fine here. Minnesota, on paper, they're the better team. Uh, the quarterback situation, I, I don't think Calic Manis is, is the answer there. And I'm not sure if Tanner Morgan will play. If he does play, I don't think he's he makes Minnesota 10 points better. Uh, Ibrahim can run, but Syracuse's defense, if healthy, uh, is going to come to play. And they, and they could potentially turn that into a low-scoring game and shut down the run. So Syracuse, 13-4 and four against the spread in bowl games. Dino Babers is 2-0 and against the spread in bowl games since he's been there. Joe, I just think this is an overreaction. I think the number has gotten too high, up to the key number of 10. Yankee Stadium is going to be a pro Syracuse crowd. New York City, ton of Syracuse alum, and it's not that far of a drive. So Syracuse should be well represented in the stands. I just think 10 is too many. It's a 4% play for me. I am on Syracuse plus 10 uh, in the pinstripe bowl on Thursday at 2 p.m. Eastern. Should be a fun one uh, there, Trig. Good stuff. How about it there, Tony? Finn, which uh, is there a bowl yeah. game here you like a little more than the rest? Yeah, well, I'm going to go to the Citrus Bowl. I'm going to go to a game between uh, – who's it between? <laughs> it's between um, Purdue uh, and Purdue's and LSU, and Purdue's going to be on the wrong end of this one. And it's going to be – I think it'll probably be a messy, messy game, much like the last game they played, mm. uh, losing to Michigan, the Big Ten title game. And this goes back to what Dave was talking about. That, here's one of these games where – and if you look at the stats, and I don't have the numbers in front of you guys, and I really apologize, but when Dave said something, I wished I had, and that was big line moves in bowl games. There's a certain – you know, four or five points um, have been pretty predictive uh, for those moves. They've been more successful than not. Uh, teams that are, however, teams that have been double digit favorites in bowl games have won. They haven't covered. So I'm kind of, I'm kind of, uh, standing in front of a locomotive and a couple of issues here. And one is the move in this game has gone from opening seven where the, where LSU was a seven point favorite to now a 15 point favorite guys, 14 and a half, 15 points. Um, but a lot of things point to a lot of, a lot of reasons why I'm going to be here. And that, and that's mostly because of coach Kelly. Brian Kelly, his first season, that the Jaden Daniels, who I said I said at the station's um, sports book with Gabe Marinci and Teddy Covers on the opening weekend. Remember the first game LSU was playing? Uh, I think was it Florida State, or I think it was Florida mm-hmm. State, and uh, and we we all lost that game. All three of us looked at each other and said, "We we all forgot how bad how bad Jaden Daniels can be," and he was bad. However. Man, he, he just seemed to grow up, really grow up. 3,500 yards of offense, 27 touchdowns. Um, the, Purdue, listen, they're, they're, a, they're a kind of an up temp. Uh, they, listen, they can score. I, I had success with Purdue. I played them over their season win total. I cashed that. Um, but LSU's too strong, too big, too physical, and much more dynamic than Purdue. And the 15's a lot delayed, but I don't think this game's even close. And uh, – uh, departures of Jeff Brom to Louisville, et cetera, et cetera. They've lost some guys. They are going to – it's going to be kids against men, in my opinion. Take LSU minus the two touchdowns and one two-point conversion <laughs> to cover against Purdue. <laughs> Sounds like Finn's expecting blowout on yes. January 2nd yes. in the Citrus Bowl. But to recap it one more time, uh, LSU uh, over two touchdowns. Trig. Syracuse uh, taking on Minnesota at Yankee Stadium coming up this week. And Dave, no bet in the game, but he's leaning Bama, laying the six and a half. And again, guys, you can get all three of these guys' plays right now over at wagertalk.com. Not just the rest of the bowl season, but like Dave said, NHL, college basketball, uh, NBA over on Tony Finn's page. Opportunities uh, to uh, start the year off right, certainly make it a profitable year. Invest and partner up with these three guys over at wagertalk.com. All right, we'll be back uh, tomorrow again. Uh, We'll look Fiesta Bowl, Peach Bowl, and then we'll keep working our way through the rest of the week and eventually hope uh, that we can navigate uh, to a national champion that we all think uh, will get crowned here. So hit that like button. Don't forget to hit the subscribe and make sure you come back. Join us again tomorrow for another edition of the College Football Kickoff Show. Until then, on behalf of Dave, Tony, and Adam, guys, best of luck with your plays today. We'll talk to you again tomorrow. Good luck.
Tuesdays is known as $2 Tuesdays at wagertalk.com and sportsmemo.com, where you can get the hottest handicappers, best bet, or daily package for only $2.